evolving. And I think that nothing is ever truly put to rest because just when you think that somebody can't make <laughs> an true. insane claim, here they come. I mean, there was a guy a couple of years ago who I did a video on who was claiming that egg whites make you fat. You know, like, it's like, God, can we, what's next? You know, like of all the things, yeah. egg whites. Yeah, that's just all those obese people who just claim, you know, they just can't stop eating egg whites, you know? Um, so, it, you know, it's, I don't think anything's ever truly put to rest, but I, I think some of the things that clear up confusion is, you know, when it comes to, one of the things I'm really focused on now is energy balance and, and trying to make it more palatable to the average person in terms of calories in, calories out. When we say calories in, calories out, we're talking about a law of physics and a physiological process. People mistake that for measurements and but and calorie budgeting, right? They say, well, I, you know, I ate 1500 calories a day and on my Fitbit, it says I burned a thousand calories per day. And, you know, this is what this online calculator said my, you know, daily energy expenditure is. So I should be losing X. Mm. And it's like, you are confusing a physiological process for a method. Okay. Tracking calories mm. is a method. Mm. So, yeah. you know, people say, well, I lost weight without tracking calories. Like it somehow invalidates energy balance. And it's like, that's great. You can save money without having a budget, but a budget will help a lot of people save money. Right. It's just a tool yeah. in the toolbox. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I really like using financial examples because I feel like it makes a little more intuitive sense to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like people will say something, well, I, you know, I just cut out carbs. And I lost weight. Well, that's great. If you just take every paycheck and immediately take, you know, a thousand dollars of it and put it in savings and never touch it, guess what? You'll save money. You know, maybe you didn't keep a budget, but what you were doing was you took away a thousand bucks. You knew it wasn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. And so you spent mm -hmm. less right? Yeah. Yep. What happens? You take away carbs, you cut out a food group, you eat less, right? So it's, it's, I think it's, I have no problem with how anybody chooses to lose weight. I think that there is a, if you look at the scientific data and just look around, we have millions of examples of people who have lost weight every which way, right? People have lost weight on a high carb diet. People lost weight on a low carb diet. People lost weight, plant-based diet, Mediterranean diet, Whatever you want to do, people have found a way to lose weight and feel healthier. What matters is, one, how that's promoted. Like, mm -hmm. let's just be honest about why it works, right? Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, what I've found a lot of is people kind of want to, they find what worked for them. And when I say work for them, mostly just something that they were able to adhere to. And here's the, here's the catch. What felt least restrictive for them what feels mm -hmm. least restrictive for an individual is individual. So for me, for example, mm -hmm. that was flexible dieting. If you tell me that I can eat whatever I want, as long as I budget for it and, you know, control my portions and, and track things. I, I like, I got very lean this past year, uh, did a photo shoot and asked my wife, yep. she was disgusted by how easy it was for me. Like she, mm -hmm. she was like, you know, she's like, you haven't even complained about it. now by the end, I did start getting a little irritable, uh, but as far as like energy and um, like cravings, like I had no problems. I did not have a day where I wasn't compliant. So and I, I think that a, a approach, I mean, that word you just used then compliance, you know, you, you can't, you can't um, out eat a bad diet. Right. So, you know, like in terms of, you know, you might have the greatest diet plan in the world, but if you're actually not doing it and setting it up in a way where it's going to promote um, compliance, whether it's with yourself or clients, it's useless. And that, you know, people really overestimate what they can be compliant to, you know, they'll, yeah. they'll come up with like a, a rigid meal plan or a low carb or whatever. They'll say, I'll stick to this. And they will, and they will, as long as everything else in their life is going well, right. As long as their schedule doesn't get thrown off, as long as they don't have any stress. That's why I tell people, I'm like, when do people blow their diets? It's not at, you know, 8am in the morning after they've had a full night of sleep and, you know, it's quiet and things are good and they don't have a lot of stress and they're in their regular schedule. No, it's when they're sleep deprived, the kids are driving them crazy, screaming mm -hmm. at, you know, 6 p.m. at night and there's a bunch of hyper palatable foods that are available, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's yeah. when it goes to crap. So really I tell people like, you ought to work backwards from what feels least restrictive to you. So for me, that's flexible dieting. Mm -hmm. But for other people it's different. Like some people tracking actually gives them quite a bit of anxiety. 
So hmm. maybe for them, it was low carb. Maybe for them, it was intermittent fasting. I don't care. What I'm saying is, let's be honest about why they work. But what happens hmm. is people find what works for them, develop an identity with it, hmm. and then try to, can I curse on this? Is that okay? Of course. You okay. can curse away. You're curse Aussie, away. so I figured you're cool with it. But <laughs> yeah, So what they'll yeah. try to do is retroactively do fuckery with the science in order to justify that what they did was physiologically the best thing because it's not good. It's almost like if you tell them the real science of like, well, it's not really better than anything else, but if you like, yeah. it's like they, it's, it's like they it's found not out that team, simple. It's mm. like they found out their team tied for the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? And they're yeah. like, we can't have a tie, but this has to be the best thing, you know, yeah. because it was so easy for them. And we, since we always view things through the prism of our own lit, our own lens, we have trouble stepping outside of that and being somebody else's shoes. And I, I think that's super important because like most of our listeners right now are, are PTs and, and fitness professionals. And I remember a quote I got from an industry um, colleague of mine many years ago. At the time, I think I was 28 and he was about my age now, 38. And he was, um, he was like, Dane, what do you think the average age of a PT is? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Tw- mid-20s is like it's, you know, 24.5 years old. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm above average. I'm like, fuck, that makes you a dinosaur made at 38. And he laughed and he's, and he's like, yes, but uh, mark my words, Dane, when you're 38, the average age of PTs is not going to be 38. It's still going to be 24.5 or even younger. And, and so, you know, what I'm saying there is if you look at a lot of the coaches that are giving advice to clients, they're looking at it through the prism of their age and experience in life as someone in their mid twenties. Now, when I was in my mid twenties, no mortgage, no business, no kids, no wife. I could do whatever the fuck I wanted whenever I wanted. Yeah. Right. Like, why can't you um, stick to this? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I could, I could eat 5,000 calories a day and stay in shape because I was just, I was doing 25,000 steps a day as a PT doing 50 sessions a week. Um, and I could do whatever. So cool. That worked for me, but that was not going to work for the majority of PTs clients. Let's just say they're 35 to 50 years old, their parents, they're again, because it's a, a luxury, not a necessity. There may be a manager or a business owner. So they've got the, the business stress. They've got the, the wife or the husband stress. They've got the kid stress. The average client that coaches are working with are not set up to follow strict guidelines and parameters that you yourself as a fitness professional might be doing to get shredded, bro. You know what I mean? So this is, a, a, I think what you said there is super important because taking yourself outside of the context of you and where you're at and trying to transplant that into someone who's at a very different stage of their life. Like, you know, uh, when you were talking about the last year, you've done the flexible dieting to, to, to get into shape. And by the way, great photo shoot and great results, mate. Like, um, you know, in, inspiring, but I think, I still you know, got it. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, a big thing with that is like realistically with your work stress, with your um, family stress, with all the type of stuff that you've got in a day to day, if someone was to say to you, Lane, I want you to go on some sort of low carb or or some whatever type of system to get into shape, even if you wanted to, it's probably not realistic due to the emotional ebbs and flows of life. Yeah. Or I mean, you know, the, the other thing is like, you know, I don't want the experience of like my daughter says, you know, can we go get ice cream? And then like me not being exactly. able to enjoy that with them, you know, like that's, yeah. that's, like, well, we can go get keto ice cream kids, you know, like, so, <laughs> but again, the experience when I, when I was, like you said, Dane, when I was in my early twenties and I started coaching people, I started coaching people when I was 23 years old online, 2005, one yeah. of the, I think probably one of the first people to really do it online. Yeah. Um, I just was like, well, this is, this is very simple. Here are these numbers, eat this, you'll get the results. And uh, it's kind of like, you, <laughs> why aren't you doing that? Well, because yeah. my kid kept me up all night and yeah, just still do exactly. it. Exactly. You know? exactly. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, a quote, uh, there's a friend of mine and he, I'm going to use a, an employer quote that you'll, you'll enjoy, but I think it applies to just general life. He, he said, what I wanted was employees and what I got was people, right? So what I wanted was clients and what I got was people, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's so just through, I I feel like these people who dogmatically stick to the same sort of things for years, you're just not paying attention. 
You're just not listening to your clients because just through sheer mass effect of working with over 1700 people, you know, over a 15 year period, I learned that it's okay to have in your mind what might be the best thing in terms of like really getting down to the minutia and stuff. For 99% of people, it doesn't fucking matter because it, it doesn't matter. You know, maybe nutrient timing matters a little bit. I don't give a fuck for my, you know, mom with four kids who's a client. I just want her to find a way to get pretty close every day, right? And if she does yep. that and she's compliant over time, the, there's going to be results, right? Yeah. But I think people get really hung up on the small, small stuff and they end up majoring in the minors and they don't even take care of the stuff that's actually really important. And that's, you know, that's a lot of my education, you know, Dane, in, in the courses, one of the yep. first things I talk about is like, when we're talking about this stuff, I'm going to talk about this in order of importance. You know what I mean? Because it's very important to understand not everything is of equal importance, you know? People get hung up on, you know, like the carbohydrate to fat ratio in their diet. Mm. What's the best ratio? And it's like, like if you're hitting your protein and calories, you are 95% of the way there, maybe more, yeah. you know? 